Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So this is part five of the series and also the guide or specific topic we're talking about today is actually one that I'm strongest at and that's partly because of my experience in Battlefield and other various games. So today we're talking about evasive target switching, one that I got all diamond rank on in these scenarios and realistically again these scenarios apply mostly to Battlefield and Call of Duty but still are very very helpful for games like Apex Legends and of course can definitely be helpful when you're playing Valorant or even CSGO as you're switching between various targets or you're doing a quick switch. Kind of those fancy shots, the uh, the flicks that are, in my opinion, so infamous in a lot of uh, content creators' videos. So today, obviously, the targets you switch between, but they also move quite a bit. Um, the next episode, the final one of the series, is mostly talking about speed. They move a little bit, but it's mostly broken down, in, you know, the biggest thing of how fast you can aim. Remember the goal of the series is to kind of help you discover your weak spots and then work on those weak spots and that's what's going to massively help you improve and gain more mouse control and improve your aim. These benchmarks and scenarios are made by the Voltaic community so I have their link in the description down below of their discord and definitely recommend checking out their aiming community. If this is helpful, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe because remember Kovacs is a gym and ways to work out and test the waters in a clean environment. Always remember to go play the game. It's just like you would with a sport. You go to the gym, build up muscle, and of course you, you gotta you gotta play the sport. To get better at basketball, you gotta play basketball. So remember the setup I'm using in this video is a G Pro Super Light, Artisan FX0 Extra Soft, DPI is 800, and my sensitivity is 1.523547. Remember these scenarios, I want to put a minimum of about 103 Overwatch FOV, and you can work on your ADS or hip fire sensitivity. Well, again, this is about maintaining your speed, and then of course slowing down and making small movements to adjust for tracking. Let's start with the first one, which is Kin TS Voltaic Easy. This is the first one that I got diamond rank on. It's a great scenario as the targets are moving quite a bit in front of you in a full 180 cone. It focuses more on horizontal, less so the verticality of things. So the verticality comes with target switching, but overall you're getting used to building momentum, then slowing down for a smoother tracking. Big tip here is to realize the biggest difference in your larger movements and your smaller ones and realize the speed. I guess the biggest tip I can give as well is don't focus on being fast, but focus on being accurate because the just because you get there faster doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get to the next target that much faster if you're just missing a bunch of shots. So my scores, or the scores overall are 45 for silver, 49 for gold, 55 for platinum, and 60 for diamond. Next up is Smoothbot TS Voltaic Easy. So this is target switching for Smoothbot. I got diamond on this one, which kind of surprised me as I was really, really struggling with Smoothbot just on its own, which I almost finally have diamond rank on. What I found interesting is how much smoother my aim was target switching between bots than only Smoothbot Voltaic Easy. I think this again goes back to my OCD of wanting to lift my mouse consistently and hit that comfortable sweet spot on my mouse pad. I would need to go back and practice more Smoothbot Voltaic. But overall, again, this is really great for finding the comfortable level of target switching. It adds verticality in there, just like regular Smoothbot, and it heavily builds off of prior the prior episode that we talked about, which is very, very helpful. So you will probably already recognize the scenario. There's just different variations that you target switch to. So again, the ranking is 37 for silver, 40 for gold, 45 for platinum, and diamond is 50. Now for Psalm TS Voltaic Easy. Apologize if I mispronounced this scenario. This is one I got diamond rank also. So again, I got diamond all three, which I'm very proud about, but it's also similar to the first. The difference here is the speed and the angle which the targets fly. Ken flew again more horizontal, while Psalm's TS put in some verticality to it, just to kind of throw you off in that extra layer, which is really going to help you. Again, as you're practicing all of these, because this, in my opinion, probably has the most impact on your forearm compared to the others, where tracking is probably gonna impact most of your wrist, depending on the sensitivity, of course, which, again, you can't avoid not using your wrist. It's gonna happen even if you're on the lowest sensitivity, because you're gonna have to use all muscles, your finger, wrist, arm, and forearm. When target switching, you'll probably notice the biggest impact is gonna be your shoulder and, of course, your forearm, depending, of course, how fast your sensitivity is. So careful not to over-practice. It can wear you down and stop your improvement. You hit a wall, which normally will happen to all of us, just take a moment, take a breather, switch to a different scenario, practice the tracking version of the scenario to increase your accuracy, then move back to the target switching. The scores are 47 for silver, 52 for gold, 58 for platinum, and 64 is diamond. 
As always, I have a link in the description down below where you can manipulate this document, make a copy, just change it however way you want, just to kind of track. The biggest thing that's gonna help you in COVAX and improve your aim is to start logging your scores. Take, take a note of how much you're progressing or maybe take a note of how much you're not progressing. If you're not progressing, perhaps switching to a different scenario is gonna help you. Find something where you are going to make some improvements and if you're struggling with it, take a step back, take a few days, maybe play the game a bit more instead and stop focusing so much on your aim and then you'll find some comfort when you come back. Let it sink into your long-term memory. Uh, so you improve your aim control and your mouse control and so you improve your overall aim and then as we talked about in the prior video of muscle memory being a meme, just how you're improving your fundamentals and that you're learning. Don't be afraid to change your sensitivity and work on things in a controlled environment like Kovax. Again, these scenarios help me a ton. Uh, I've learned quite a bit from various mouse pads, mouse and sensitivities. We still have just one more to go in the series. And this kind of will hopefully will help people when they're looking for ways to improve their aim in Kovax and really translate it in game. But again, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys all in the final episode.